Hi, I'm Mark Poor. I've been in this valley now since 1977. I brought a road bike with me, and of course, we had mountains, but nobody had a mountain bike. And started skiing and riding the roads, and then 84 brought a mountain bike to the area. We just started exploring old uh, logging roads and rail grade. We had cross country trails and some sketchy downhill. <laughs> And those dive was so friggin' steep, it didn't matter what kind of brakes you had because back in the day they were all crap if you were coming off the side of a mountain that steep. I had some friends that uh, were talking about riding this mountain and how cool it would be to uh, have a bike race here. That inspired me and I got U.S. Cycling to uh, go ahead and uh, sanction a race. And we had, I think it was Matt Eaton who won it and he got up the mountain in 22 minutes flat from the Welcome Center to Shamrock. That's what, a little over six miles. <laughs> and then uh, a couple years later, mid uh, 80s, 86, 87, we had the Kmart Classic. And this was one of three pro races uh, in the country. And Lance Armstrong rode it from Canaan Valley to the mountain and he beat that 22-minute uh, record after riding all the way from Canaan. In 90, Snowshoe was looking at uh, putting mountain bikes in the mountain. So uh, Paul Hudson out of Charleston, West Virginia, you know, has sporting life. We have a ski shop here and one in Charleston. And he goes, well, I'll fund it. And so I was the only employee. And, if we had a shuttle, I'd throw the bikes in my S10 and we'd all pile in and go to the top of the mountain. Uh, my name's Philip Duncan. I've been here since 2000, uh, originally from Huntington, West Virginia. Oh, when I got here, I mean, the, I went to my first Norba race and I saw all these downhill bikes and all this crazy racing and, and I was like, what is going on here? This is awesome. And it changed my life. And I saw the lift was running, so I was like, well, we could build a park. All we need is to build some trails and got, you know, management behind me and next thing you know, starting to hand cut trails. I cut all most of the beginner trails at the beginning with a bow saw and a machete, after hours kind of thing. All there was was Western Territory and the trails were, you know, just gnarly, but that's what people rode. I mean, those trails were cut in with an old, you know, ProFlex with the rubber elastomer shocks. There was two guys from, from Columbus. And remember the, the Western side only had um, bear pin and, and a few like old bird land and things like that. So you only had a handful of trails. But there was a ton of land over there, and these guys would come with, you know, catchers, uh, knee and shin, and hockey gear, all geared up to where it looked like, you know, bomb little snowman, and they would huck off of everything. They were the funniest guys. They'd just come up here, and if they could see it, they'd hike up and drop it, because drops were big. It was the funniest thing. Uh, I was working with um, Bruce Pate, who's the VP of um, Lodging at Whistler, and he came here to be the GM. Canadians love their mountain bikes, and so it was an easy sell. You know, lift's already going, let's build this park. And there was a, already a small core group of guys that really liked to ride, and, and people were coming in, and, and we had Brad Stone and, and Dave Huber and a bunch of people that you know made that core, passionate core rider base, and it just kept rolling and rolling and rolling. It was awesome. And everything was free ride, free ride, free ride. All the pictures in bike magazines and all that, you know. That was fuel and everything, because it was, it was new and it was fresh and it was like, holy cow, you know, you see pictures of people doing, you know, crazy drops and all that. And so we were trying to build stuff that looked like Whistler and Whistler was looking at our stuff, you know, and other people's stuff like, they should build stuff like ours. I remember that first year, um, once we started getting, you know, a little bit more popularity and all that, then we had Monster Park come in. And the first year, we were building all kinds of crazy seawall and just all this cool half pipe stuff and all this. And then they came back for the second year. And we built these three drops that were in the in the trees. And this was before Rampage. And everybody looked at those drops and like, somebody's gonna die. Ended up, you know, after practice, they were doing 360s off of it and backflips. It was pretty neat. Uh, I'm Mikey Velosh, and this is my family, Tracy, Anna, and Mia. I started riding at Snowshoe when I was eight years old in 1992. I've seen the mountain biking scene grow and collegiate nationals was pretty impressive to see here and all the kids from 
throughout the country racing for collegiate national titles and in the past two years the U.S. Cycling Mountain Bike Nationals and I got to compete in that last year in the Enduro and now to see the World Cup here, um, the pinnacle of mountain bike racing at Snowshoe, it's pretty amazing. It's a once in a lifetime experience and pretty excited to see the best in the world race at Snowshoe where I call home. Snowshoe's been a race mountain from the beginning. They've always had race, like I say, Norba, and we had our own series, and we've always been a race mountain, always. So this is just natural progression. I mean, people have been racing here forever for a reason, because it's gnarly and it's awesome, so get after it. You know, when you start talking uh, classic Eastern single track, uh, then you get into subcategories, you got classic West Virginia. Uh, single track and it's rowdy and it developed a reputation early on. Riding here at Snowshoe makes us ready for pretty much any terrain out there. The girls have been in the park since they were four and five years old and with the proper instruction like they offer here at Snowshoe as well as the proper gear from full face helmets to um, full suspension bikes even for younger children makes the park accessible to families to get started in the sport and um, just makes mountain biking fun for everybody because everybody's safe. Like we've been doing this forever you know. It's ain't a comeback we've been doing this for years. <laughs>